Good morning, and welcome to our Mass from the historic Basilica Cathedral of St. John the Baptist. We pray that you and your loved ones are in good health. Please check our parish website for updates and for links to devotions and other information, as well as how to continue to financially support this parish as we journey through this virus is Archbishop Hunt, and our entrance chant is number 489 in the Catholic Book of Worship. and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. We come together on this first day of, uh, as a province, being at alert level four, uh, praying that God will bless us as we move to this new level and uh, bless uh, our efforts as a province uh, in seeking to put an end to this pandemic in our situation. Uh, with this in mind, I'm going to use the prayers for the Mass in time of a pandemic as the prayers of the Mass today, and that we may worthily offer our prayers to God and seek his assistance. Let us pause to call to mind his goodness and ask forgiveness for our sins. God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, our refuge in every danger, to whom we turn in our distress, in faith we pray, look with compassion on the afflicted, grant eternal rest to the dead, comfort to mourners, healing to the sick, peace to the dying, strength to health care workers, wisdom to our leaders, 
and the courage to reach out to all in love so that together we may give glory to your holy name. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. At Iconium, Paul and Barnabas spoke in such a way that a great number of both Jews and Greeks became believers. But the residents of the city were divided, so that when an attempt was made by both Gentiles and Jews, with their rulers, to mistreat them and to stone them, the apostles learned of it and fled to Lystra and Derbe, cities of Lycaonia, and to the surrounding country. And there they continued proclaiming the good news. In Lystra there was a man sitting who could not use his feet and had never walked, for he had been crippled from birth. He listened to Paul as he was speaking, and Paul, looking at him intently and seeing that he had faith to be healed, said in a loud voice, Stand upright on your feet. And the man sprang up and began to walk. When the crowd saw what Paul had done, they shouted in the, in the Lycaonian language, The gods have come down to us in human form. Barnabas they called Zeus, and Paul they called Hermes, because he was the chief speaker. The priest of Zeus, whose temple was just outside the city, brought oxen and garlands to the gates. He and the crowds wanted to offer sacrifice. When the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of it, they tore their clothes and rushed out into the crowd, shouting, Friends, why are you doing this? We are mortals just like you, and we bring you good news that you should turn from these, these worthless things to the living God who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is in them. In past generations, God allowed all the nations to follow their own ways. Yet he has not left himself without a witness in doing good, giving you rains from heaven and fruitful seasons and filling you with food and your hearts with joy. Even with these words, they scarcely restrained the crowds from offering sacrifice to them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be Thanks to God. The responsorial psalm is number 196 in the Catholic Book of Worship.
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and to go to the Father. During the supper, Jesus said to the disciples, They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will reveal yourself to us, but not to the world? Jesus answered him, Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all I have said to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We see a rather comedic thing happening in today's first reading. Paul and Barnabas uh, heal a man in the name of Jesus Christ, as a witness to Christ. And the people uh, think of them as their own old Greek gods, and they start to try to worship Paul and Barnabas. Here on the one hand, they're trying to proclaim Christ, and uh, they're playing into the hands of the old beliefs. We're told that Paul and Barnabas rush out into the crowd and and say, no, 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 we're not gods. We're people, we're men just like you. And they have a hard time convincing uh, the people not to look upon them as gods. When I was reflecting on the readings, uh, it made me think of something that they taught us about in the seminary, about uh, that we had to be careful that we didn't get a Messiah complex. Uh, And uh, what the professors were getting at is that sometimes as young priests, there's a tendency to think that uh, we're the Messiah, that, uh, that we've got to do it all. Uh, that to know there's a limit on what we can do, we do our part. I think the, the other message with the Messiah complex, and maybe one we didn't hear as well as we should have, is that sometimes there is that tendency to be willing to accept uh, the worship of people as if you were God rather than uh, a servant of the Lord. There's an expression that uh, praise should be treated like chewing gum. It should be savored enjoyed but never swallowed and certainly we see in Paul and Barnabas in our first reading today people who are very aware that they are the messengers of God and not God they're very much aware that of what they're called to do and the limits uh, of what uh, that um, that uh, vocation is on their part you know I think in all of our lives there's a challenge for us on the one hand to recognize that we are called to be messengers of God, uh, that the way we live and that what we do uh, is very important for proclaiming Christ, but that there are limits on what we can do. Uh, The ancient Greeks used to say that for every virtue there were two vices, excess and defect. And it's about finding that balance, about on the one hand doing our part, but on the other hand recognizing that there are real limits to what we can do finding that balance. In the gospel today, Jesus assures the apostles that after he goes, he will send them the Holy Spirit, the Advocate, and that the Father will send him in my name, and he will teach you everything and remind you of all I have said to you. We have received the Holy Spirit through baptism and through confirmation. And as we continue in our Mass today, we praise God for the gift of the Holy Spirit, And we ask the Lord to help us to be open to the Spirit and his guidance, that we may do our part but recognize our limitations, that we may seek always to serve him and to give him the glory by what we do. God bless you.
confidence in God's goodness, let us offer to him our prayers and petitions. We pray for our Pope and for all our religious and civil leaders, that they may be open to God's guidance, and that they may have the wisdom and courage they need to lead well. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. As we enter Alert Level 4 in this province, we ask the Lord to help all of us to, to seek to be faithful in, in our part uh, of, uh, of keeping this coronavirus um, in check, that we might do our part and be open to the, the guidance that he seeks to give us uh, through this new level. For this we pray to the Lord. We pray for the sick and suffering, especially those who are struggling uh, with this virus at this time. And we pray for all those health care workers uh, who seek to assist them. For God's blessings and protection for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have gone before us marked with the sign of faith, that they may have eternal rest with God in heaven, and that those who mourn their passing may be consoled, we pray to the Lord. Let us pause to add our own personal intentions. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear the prayers that we offer you this morning, both those we have spoken aloud and those that are in our hearts, for they are offered through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the gifts we offer in this time of peril. May they become for us by your power a source of healing and peace through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross, and by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. John the Baptist, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours forever and ever.
confidence in God's goodness, we pray for the coming of his kingdom using the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of the Lord's peace. of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that, that you should enter under my roof, but only, only say, say the word, word and, and my soul, soul shall, shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Our communion chant is number 6.4 in Celebrate in Song. Let us be bread.
Let us pray. O God, from whose hand we have received the medicine of eternal life, grant that through this sacrament we may glory in the fullness of heavenly healing through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to join with me in praying the prayer of Pope Francis to Mary for help and protection during the coronavirus pandemic. O Mary, Mary. you always shine in our path as a sign of salvation and of hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick, who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain, keeping your faith firm. You, salvation of your people, know what we need, and we are sure you will provide so that, as in Cana of Galilee, we may return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father and to do as we are told by Jesus, who has taken upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows to lead us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. Under your protection, we seek refuge, O Mother of God. Do not disdain the entreaties of we who are in trial, but deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Before the final blessing, I just uh, bring to your attention that the uh, president uh, of the Pontifical Council for Interreligious Dialogue invites believers and all of all religions and people of goodwill to spiritually unite themselves in a day of prayer and fasting and works of charity to implore the divine help, uh, the divine to help humanity in overcoming the pandemic caused by the coronavirus. And this day of prayer, fasting, and, and works of charity uh, will be this Thursday, May the 14th. So we're invited to participate in that, each in our own way. And Father Critch will be having the Mass that morning and will be especially remembering uh, this prayer uh, at that time. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. O God, protector of all who hope in you, bless your people, keep them safe, defend them, prepare them, that, free from sin and safe from the enemy, they may persevere always in your love, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Our missioning chant is number 437, Crown Him with Many Crowns. Crown him the Lord.